In this video, I'm building a small parts organizer. And this is actually inspired by a project that Neil Paskin did a little over a year ago. And that's one of his projects on the Maker's Mob, one of his full build tutorials. As you know, I made this project for the Maker's Mob not that long ago, and I challenged you, John, to have a go at it yourself. I had a lot of fun making it, hopefully you do too, and I'm looking forward to seeing how you go with it. Now with his, he tried to do as much as he possibly could with hand tools. I'm not gonna do that, there's a lot of cutting to do, but I will try to limit how many tools I do use. This first piece that I'm cutting is maple, that's an inch and a half thick, and I need to cut that down into slices that are quarter inch thick, I need a few of those, and also half inch thick, I only need one of those I think, and three quarters of an inch, and I definitely only need one of those. And this organizer can be built with any type of wood, but I'm gonna use walnut to make it extra fancy, and that'll be for the case that wraps around the drawers. The top and bottom will be quarter inch thick, and that's what I'm cutting right here. Before I make the next cut, I need to flatten the side that I just cut so that it doesn't have any ridges. Oh. The sides of each case are a half inch thick, and that's what I'm cutting right now. This is a different piece of stock though, and there's a lot of drying stress built up. I'm getting a little bit of binding, but we know how to take care of that. Run it in until it starts to bind, pull it back out, and recut the kerf over and over again until it cuts right through. I'm using a scraper to flatten the pieces of quarter inch stock that I cut for the top and bottom of the case. It really doesn't take very many strokes of the scraper to get rid of that ridge in the middle. And for the half inch pieces that I'll use to the side, I'm using a hand plane and you can see I'm going sideways with it. And I have the back end of the plane sitting on another half inch thick piece to guide it, and this will very quickly flatten it, and there's very little chance to tear out. And then it looks pretty rough when I'm done, but it only takes a few strokes with a sharp scraper to clean all that up. Join myself, Jimmy DeResta, the Samurai Carpenter, John Peters, Frank Howarth, and Neil Paskin for the Maker's Mob annual Black Friday and Cyber Monday sale. We have put together 27 of our most popular woodworking plans and all of those come with step-by-step -step video tutorials for just 99 cents. To access our biggest sale of the year, simply click the link in the description. But act fast because this offer expires on Monday at midnight. Now that I have all the stock prepped, I can start working on the drawers. And the first step is to cut the front and back of each drawer to length from the quarter inch strips that I cut first. Then I can change out the blade on my table saw to one that's a little bit thicker. I need to make rabbits in the bottom edge for the bottom panel. And I'm also cutting dados for dividers that will be put in after. On each drawer, there's a front and a back. The front panel is actually longer. So I can only make one of those dados for the dividers on one end. But on the back panel, I can do it on both ends, since they're equally spaced. Then I can reset the fence and cut the dado for the middle divider. And I can do that in the front and the back panel. And with that done, I can reset the fence again for a third time. And this will cut that last dado in the front panel. And you can see here that it's further from the end. One of the features of this box is that there's no metal involved. I wanted to make everything from wood and that includes the handles. And for the handles, I decided to use a half moon cutout on the end that you can stick your finger in and pull it open. And to do that in two fronts at a time, 
I'm using a three quarter inch Forstner bit with the two pieces end to end. In hindsight, one change that I would make to the design is to have this hole slightly bigger, maybe seven eighths or even one inch. My fingers are not overly huge, but they're a tight fit in that small hole. Next, I can start working on that half inch piece of maple that I cut. I need to make a rabbit on the bottom to receive the bottom panel of the drawer. And this will be for the end panel of the drawer closest to that finger hole that I just cut. Then I can do the same for the three quarter inch piece. And that's once again, the end panel on the drawer, but it's the one that has the hole for the pivot. And these are exactly the same length as the half inch ones that I just cut. Now back to the half inch ones and I need another rabbit on one edge. And this is for the back panel of the drawer. And I did the same for the three quarter inch thick pieces, except those need a rabbit on both ends for the back and the front panel. And with all that done, I can start putting them together. I've got 18 drawers to assemble. And the way that I'm doing them is I'm gluing one joint at a time, giving it about a half an hour to dry and then gluing the next joint, another half hour, and then so on and so forth until they're fully assembled. These parts are small and they fit together really well, so I don't need any clamps. And if you're wondering how strong this will be with just glue, it's gonna be very strong because along with these parts being glued together, the bottom panel will be glued in as well and really add a lot of strength. And relatively speaking, you can't put a lot of weight in each one of these drawers. And for the bottom panels, I'm using quarter inch plywood. I'm gonna rip it to the correct width and then use my mini table saw sled to cut them to the correct length. After I got all the bottom panels glued in and let those dry, I sanded the tops of each one just to clean them up and make sure everything's flush. And then the only part of this drawer that actually shows on the outside is the front, so I sanded that as well. Now comes the tricky part of drilling the pivot hole in the front corner of each drawer. And I've set up my fence on my drill press and also a stop for the drawer to go up against. And that positions the 7 16 inch bit exactly where it needs to be. Now I'm using 7 16 inch because that's the size dowel I had, but I think a better size would be 3 8 And the good thing about this is you don't need to change anything about the jig or the setup here to drill the hole in the other drawer that's opposite. All you need to do is flip the drawer upside down. That corner where the pivot is needs to be rounded over so that it will rotate properly. And I set up a very simple jig on my strip sander to do that. I'm also slightly rounding over the opposite corner to that. This is at the back of the drawer, and that's so that it won't hit the side panel of the case when you open the drawer. Speaking of the case, I can get started on building that now. This is one of the side panels that I'm cutting to the correct length. And then this needs a quarter inch rabbit in the top and the bottom except I'm doing something a little bit differently here. I'm cutting the rabbit and then I'm gonna recut it a little bit deeper so that it creates a bit of a groove for a tongue to fit in that will be in the top and the bottom. Then I can cut the top and bottom panels to length, trimming off the end first, and then set the stop block on my mini table saw sled so that I can cut that tongue that I talked about earlier. And this really doesn't do anything other than keep the parts in line so that you only have to clamp this joint together in one direction. Last thing to do is to cut the panels to the correct width and this gets rid of any chip out that might have happened while I made the other cuts. The rabbit that I'm cutting now is for the back panel. And I'm doing that with three cuts using the thinner blade because I don't want to change out the blade again.
Next tricky operation is getting the holes drilled for the pivots in exactly the right place. And I figured the easiest way to do that is with two of the drawers clamped down to the panels and then drill through those holes that are already there into the panel itself and make the holes. Now I can start assembly on the cases, get some glue in the joint and put it together. And I'm using three of my homemade bar clamps to clamp it up until the glue dries. And because I made those fancy tongue and groove rabbit joints, I only need three clamps to hold it together. Once again, I'm using quarter inch plywood for the back panel of the box. These are meant to be mounted on the wall or on the side of a cabinet. So the back really doesn't matter, not for me anyway. But if you want it to look better, you can use better plywood here or veneer the whole thing on the back. Now for the pivots, I'm using 7 16 inch hardwood dowels. What I'm doing here could have been done easier before I put the box together. These are just shallow cuts that will give you a little bit more space to get your finger in when you're opening the drawer. And I could have done it a lot easier on my spindle sander with a 3 quarter inch spindle. With all the assembly done, I can get the final sanding done and round over all the corners that I want rounded over. The scraper left a good finish, but it's my opinion that you can improve that by sanding as well. To bring out the rich color and grain of the walnut, I'm using a tongue oil blend. Just wiping it on with a small piece of cloth and then letting that sink in for about 15 minutes and wiping off the excess. And then for the drawers of the box, I'm using water-based polyurethane, but I'm really only putting it on the front. It's winter here now and I really can't spray outdoors, so maybe in the spring I'll take them out again and spray them. Otherwise, they'll be just fine. I let the finish dry for a couple of days and now I can install the drawers and slide the dowel in. And what holds this in place is a screw. Now these can be glued in permanently, but I prefer to use a small screw in case I want to take it out at some point and do something. Like in the spring, if I want to take the drawers out again and spray them with water-based polyurethane. This is a very small screw, a number four, and to make it even smaller, I put it in the drill and I use the file to make the head smaller. And here it is finished. I made this in three separate units because I figured that three drawers stacked like this would be about the limit for convenience. You don't want too much weight stacked on the bottom drawer. It'll make it too difficult to open. Also a slight inconvenience of doing it this way is that the drawer above or the drawer below tends to open while you open the drawer you want to open. So you need to hold those closed while you do it. And a way to get around that is to separate each drawer with another panel, either full size or just out at the edge. But I think that that adds more complexity than it's actually worth. Mm -hmm.